this is our little spider tally box, which is now mounted a little Raspberry Pi. And let me take the top off. That probably make a lot of sense. We'll set that aside for a second. So inside of here, we have a front panel display, a little 16 by two, and then we have a Raspberry Pi. Now I had a Raspberry Pi 2 laying around. I think at this point a Raspberry Pi 4 has been out for a couple of years, but with the chip shortage, it's it's basically unobtainium. So a cheap Raspberry Pi works the trick just fine for this. And then I think last time I did a video way the hell back when this was an eight relay module, and now I just happen to have a four relay module sitting around, so I plug that one in. This would work just fine, and we'll look at the software maybe in a minute. But that's basically it. So Raspberry Pi, we're going to plug in network. One one thing I kind of screwed up on this and the 3D models that, that I'll link to online, it fixed this since these two boards need to be swapped. And I don't know how I got this wrong because I spent time thinking about it, but this little connector over here, I should find something better to point with. This little connector over here is our USB power, which if it was on this side, we could plug in a lot more easily. And I have a cool, oh, where'd that run off to? I have a cool little power cable somewhere that breaks a USB port out to a panel mount USB. So you know, once, once a back panel actually exists for this thing, which I haven't modeled yet, that will, uh, it should come together really, really nicely. So here's kind of what it looks like with the back panel on, or the top panel on, sorry. And yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it. See so you. Uh, a few things that could be fixed on on this thing, but I, I feel like as a as a starter, not not bad as revision one. So let me pause for just a second, or take a second, and just kind of plug this guy in. So actually. I have to do this kind of little hack through the side because this 3D case that I have printed again has the Raspberry Pi on the wrong side, but easy to work around for the time being. So we're going to plug this guy in here and then we'll just plug in our Ethernet cable. And normally, again in the last video, uh, we I, I could probably throw up some pictures of it. Um, you know, I, I had a little breadboard with a 9 volt battery testing these these relays, but we'll hear, hear them click. And this time around, we're gonna have a front panel that actually has some display to show you what relays are active at at any moment in time. So let me kind of slap this guy back together, and we'll go ahead and turn it on. Now the screen ends up being super super blown out. Well. I'm trying to video it until I get it up and close. So give me just a moment. Cool. Okay. So when the when the thing's running normally, it shows the IP address on the front, and then it shows some little indicators on the bottom to tell you which tallies are are turned on. And then for good measure, there's a little blinky thing in the corner just to tell you that it's alive and well. So let me see if I can just actuate one of those real quick. So you get an idea what it looks like when they're off. So see, so tally two in this case is now off. So he's a he's an empty circle where the other ones are turned on because they're filled. So let me cut away to something where I can share a screen and we'll take a little bit more of a look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at what the software is doing here. So if we look at the camera feed, we see that we have four little dots there, right? We got one, two, three, and four. One three and four are turned on and there's a empty circle for two. And what I did right before we cut over to looking at the screen was I took source two and I brought it to preview. Now if I transition that guy back up to program immediately the the second LED comes back on. So where's that configured? So now we actually have a cool new web interface to configure this thing. Okay, so this is an improvement over what we had last time. I think last time I was showing a, a tally thing, you had to actually hard code the sources and code, and there was some, you know, hey, big to do that later we'll get around to it. So finally we got around to it. So this configuration has four tallies. This application and uh, device software will support n number of tallies. So we can look at how to configure that uh, for, for the hardware later. But the setup is pretty simple 
for turning things on. So you pick a spider server IP address. So 192.168.86.65 is the IP address of a local machine that we're running. One of the cool things about all the versions of spider going back through time is you can actually fire them up in uh, what we call like local remoting mode, which means that it operates to the network as if it is a server. So you can do all this all this testing without actually having to have real hardware, in this case a real uh, x80 unit. So there's the IP address and then the name of each one of the sources. So I kept the simple. I've got four sources, source one, two, three, and four. And I just typed in one, two, three, and four for, for these sources. Now there's a couple of modes that we can flip them on to. So we can say, uh, turn on that tally when it's in program, turn it on when it's in preview, or turn it on if it's in either preview or program. And then the last two, uh, force on and force off, are, are literally just that. It basically disconnects entirely what's going on with a server and a source and just says, turn that thing on, turn it off. Um, so in this case, actually, if I force off one and I just say apply, then what I'll immediately see is one turns off. And if I want to force it back on, then it will turn on immediately. Even if, let me just go ahead and remove this guy. So one, source one is no longer on screen, but because I'm forcing this on, it, it'll show up. And if I flip it right back to on in program, then bam, it turns right back off again. Now, indicating the spider server for each line is only cool if it can support multiple spiders, and it can. So if you have multiple, you know, primary backup or you just have a couple different spider servers uh, you know as, as part of a show in general you can just change the IP address for each one of these tally instances as needed um, and and that's it basically now it works with the latest version of the x80 software the the five five dot whatever version of software what, what are we running over here actually uh, Help about 5.4.1. I think that's the the latest and greatest version of software. But it so it works with this, but it also works with basically every other version of Spider software ever made. So if for funsies I wanted to drag out uh, what version are we run here. Oops, wrong wrong help. Uh, about advanced. So this is 2012, this is 4.0.7, controlling A1608. Again, virtual, this thing's also in local remoting mode. But if I go and plug in his IP address, so down here he's 192.168.86.59. So we'll say 86.59. And uh, let's, let's get rid of these for a second, but I'm gonna use cam1 as maybe a source that I care about. So this guy will be cam one, and we'll just hit apply. And what we should see, yep, we saw it turn off immediately because it's not on at the moment. But if I take cam one, and just for funsies, I'll put it in preview. So we only want it to show up as soon as it hits program. But the moment I transition it, boom, the tally turns on for, for program. Uh, let's keep going. So. Here's another one. So this is a Spider 222. And what version of software are we running here? Okay, this one's 2009. So this is the previous version, and it's running 359. And his IP address is 86.75. So we'll say 86.75. Oops, not 675. 75. And we'll say my cool PC is the source that I care about here. So we will hit apply and it turns off immediately because it's not actually on screen at the moment. But if I do the same thing and now I'll just drag it directly into program, then boom, immediately it pops on our, our tally. So now we have three, three totally different versions of software running and controlling our tallies and if we want to just keep playing with them. So what do we got here? So all except for one is on. So let's bring source one back on screen. Okay, so all four of our routes are here. And then if I just take all these guys, 
actually here, let's say, add from program, we'll say on, and then maybe we'll create a empty one, we'll just call it off. Okay, so that's on. When we take them off, we see the two shut off that are still connected to the x80. And just for funsies, just to watch the response time, we see them coming on and off pretty, pretty snappy. Then we'll drag this guy over here and remove cam one. And we should see the next source disappear. Cool. So I'll get rid of him. And last, but certainly not least, my cool PC. I will remove him. And boom. Done. Uh, so let's see here. So we looked at the cap the configuration page. Actually, let me put my cool PC back on so we have some, some interesting stuff over here. There's also a status page up here that I haven't popped up yet. So this shows you in the web interface uh, each one of the, a little dotty for each one of those tallies, and now three is the one that's on screen. And then this gives you kind of some potentially useful device info, so what version of software is it running, how long has the thing been turned on, um, you know, disk, and then in, in my case, I'm, I'm running this thing on a Raspberry Pi 2, but it, the disk image should work with, you know, any of the Raspberry Pi images, how it'll port over to, to anything pretty, pretty easily, I would imagine. The only caveat that may be worth mentioning is this thing in the, the version of software that I'm playing with right now doesn't actually refresh on here immediately. So you either have to refresh the page or just pop over to configuration and pop back and that would that would do it as well. Uh, I, I guess let's pop over for just a second and take a peek at the uh, 3D model for the chassis itself. So let's go over here. And I'll just create a new tab. Let's say, let's see, what, what did I do there? Tinker CAD. So I made this little 3D case um, in, in a few hours poking around in Tinker CAD. And I will make the links to this available for anybody who wants to print their own little chassis. So uh, it's two pieces. So there's a top and there's a bottom piece. And let me go pop this guy in here. Neat. Uh, okay, so feel free to make changes as as you like, of course. Okay, now now it's all good and loaded. So there's some little standoffs for each one of our boards. So you can plug in your, your Raspberry Pi and your tally board. Again, hopefully by the time you see this, these two will actually be flipped because the Raspberry Pi needs to be on this side, so you can actually pull a power cord, but it has the holes to, uh, to screw in each one of these boards. And then same thing for the front panel. There's some holes here, and then there's a little notch because there's uh, the, the display itself actually has a physical little notch, so it, it actually fits quite nicely once, once we get it all in there. And then for the back panel, which I did not show uh, because I haven't modeled yet, there's a little slot kind of running through through here that that we can stick a back panel on. And then similarly on the front panel, if I jump back real quick. One more. Here's that chassis top. And give it a second to load. Neat. I stuck my uh, shame, shameless plug, I stuck my web page in the print over here on the inside of the case, not, not on the outside, and there's some little standoffs for screwing the top half of this thing to the bottom, and then some little stability uh, wedges as, as we go through here. Um, yeah, maybe maybe not super, super exciting. Uh, why does that look weird? There we go. Uh, this, this little notch comes down over the top of the LCD panel, if, if you remember from looking at the video a minute ago. And that's about it. When you go to 3D print this thing, whether you go to some, hell, there are places online that you can that you can just dump STL files. When you need those STL files, you are going to just go export and pick STL, and the thing will download a file. 
that you can hand off uh, either to your own 3D printer, or you, you run it through your own little slicer and you can print it up, or you can upload it to services online. I haven't priced them out, but it's you know, pro probably pseudo negligible for, for cost. I, I won't venture a guess, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think, dang, I think that's it uh, for that. And then real quick, while we're taking a peek through stuff, let's go look at the GitHub repository where this thing lives. So I will include a link to this, um, as well as a link to a blog post that I'll, I'll stick up on, on my website. Stay tuned for some of the documentation to, to maybe update here. This is still talking about um, the Raspberry Pi 2 running on Windows 10 Core, and now we're, we're up and we're running on Linux. So, uh, but when we get into here, so source, uh, there's two variants of source at the moment. So this um, Linux controller is the one that, that we're basically looking at right now. The Windows IoT Core hasn't been updated in some time other than maintenance updates. The eight months ago, I updated it to work with x80 just by pulling a library update in for, for talking with spiders. But the new hotness is all about the Linux build. So you can pull this down, you can build it in .NET, it'll actually compile on target. Um, I, sorry, you can open it in Visual Studio. It will compile directly on the Raspberry Pi, which is how I've, I've built it and debugged it locally for, for myself. I think, I think that's about it. I'll leave it to anybody interested to pop into the source code here and, and take a look. Absolutely accepting feedback, pull requests, issues, all, all that good kind of stuff. Yeah, actually, I guess last, last thing to go take a peek at is... Uh, let's hop in. So if anybody happens to be interested in building one of these, it, this, this repo will include an SD card image, which isn't posted yet, but you should be able to get it um, hopefully by, by the time this thing's all posted up. It will be for the four tally configuration that, that I was just showing you. So if you want to change over to an eight or you know, help 16, what, however many tallies you actually want. Uh, you can plug in a keyboard and mouse locally. The credentials will be on the on the site, but I'm going to go and SSH at this guy as well since it's already sitting on the network. Uh, his host name by default is called spider-tallies. And let me just pop in here. So we're going to go into the app directory from the home login and there are two files in here that, that we care about appconfig.json and the one we really care about is deviceconfig.json so in in order I suppose if I were to cat out to look at the contents of appconfig.json this is the stuff that you can configure from the web page so you actually never have to touch this this file directly but if, if you care, it's there. Every, every time you hit apply, we basically save this thing to the disk at, at this location. The one that you would want to change if you want to go to like an eight tally device, uh, very, very simple is the second one, this device config. So if I, let me just clear, clear this and cat out a our device config. Super, super simple. So the only thing you would have to do if you wanted to change this, in fact, the image has nano on it, so let's just, right, real quick, let's let's play with a theoretical. Nano, device config. So you would change this over and say, let's, let's pretend like I have an eight tally IO board. So that's great, now we have eight, and now we just need to specify what physical pins on the, uh, sorry, which logical pins on the Raspberry Pi are we actually connected to. And if we have eight of eight tally count, we should have exactly eight of these things. So four should, I, I'm making up pins, don't, don't try and use these. Um, 25, five, 25, you know, something, something along these lines, six, So that would be zero through seven. So that's eight uh, GPIO pins. Where you would pull these GPIO pins from would be, you would go to your favorite 
uh, web browser and you would Google with Bing and you would look for Raspberry Pi. Uh, in my case, it's two. Uh, now, I think two, three, and four are all kind of the same. But we're going to go look for a pretty picture and this will probably get us there. Yeah, something, something like this guy. So this picture shows you the header that runs down the side of your Raspberry Pi. And you're, again, you're looking for logical pins when you're writing stuff in here, not physical pins. So notice, for instance, I'm on 4, 27, and 22. So 4 is this pin. It's actually physical pin 7, but it's logical GPIO pin 4. And then 27 is just down here on pin 13. Uh, what do we got? 22 and 23. So here's 22 and here's 23. So logical pins and basically you just find, so you could use say, for instance, 5, 6, 13, 19, as long as they're not used by something else like the front panel. Uh, and then there will be a pin out on the, on the side. The, the front panel is using these, uh, it's actually using two and three. It's using the I squared C interface and then a power and ground pin. But the rest of these are basically sitting open for whatever you want. So if you even wanted to stack multiple tally boards and put, you know, 16 relays hanging off of off of one Raspberry Pi, uh, it would work just fine. I guess at, at 16 is probably the limit for the front panel to continue showing them because there's only 16 characters wide. But um, but yeah, that's that that's how you would extend this thing to work on, you know, eight or however many tallies you you wanted. Uh, for me, I am not going to save that file. And I'll just hop right out of here. Yeah, I guess for, for filler on how, how this stuff works, I would send you over to a prior blog post over on my site uh, showing the 8 relay running on a Raspberry Pi with Windows IoT Core. And uh, this, this video, uh, maybe if you scroll down a little bit more, this video specifically, the building the spider tally controller, still conceptually fits. There's a lot of the concept of like, how do we talk? How do spiders update the network? What are we actually reading to, to determine which sources are on screen at any time? All of that stuff still applies in the same way. It's using some of the same libraries under the covers. Um, would definitely recommend checking, checking that out. Uh, cool. I suppose I will probably wrap it up for now. And thank you for watching my TED Talk.